Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, sorry, running a little late. Um, I can just make this go a little quicker. Uh, my name is Britt Yazel. Um, I am on the uh, a newly, or yes, not a, new, a couple, a few months now. I've been on the GNOME board of directors. Um, I'm fairly new to the GNOME community. I've been around for about a year now. Um, uh, I'm a doctoral candidate in neuroscience, which is a little bit um, different than. <laughs> than probably what we're expecting. But uh, the work that I've been doing for GNOME over the last year is on the engagement team. Uh, primarily, I've been running a lot of the engagement social media accounts and working uh, Let's jump into setting a positive voice for GNOME. So just to, just to start off first, this is less of a me telling you how to set a story. Nobody ever complained. People absolutely loved it. <laughs> or something. I don't want to call them out. Early on, that were not in our favor. So new desktop interface flops. Linus at our expense. So, um, those are some greatest hits. Those are, th those are th not, those are still like some have the, for the pitchforks and torches and want to burn us down. Um, regardless of how it is, we are not a boring project and we don't inspire apathy. I think we inspire, uh, we inspire lots of feelings. Okay. <laughs> you see what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> Strong opinions. So I have two, I think, Twitter posts that were taken very recently. Um, the authors of these posts can remain nameless. Um, but I think both of these represent kind of what life is like in free and open source projects. So first one says, I love the GNOME community, just saying you can't be a part of something for over 20 years without thinking that there's something special about it. <laughs> After that many years, it's weird as a man who crossed 50 that I joined the project in the late 20s and I'm still here. I think that sentiment probably is what resonates with many of us here. I know I've only been around for about a year as far as the community is concerned, but I've been using GNOME for 15 years and I still love it to this day. I loved it back when GNOME 3 was released. I love every release that we've ever done. Um, I have my criticisms, but we all do, but I just love it. 
Um, but then we have a lot of this, and this isn't this isn't a testimony by a user. This is a testimony by a, a FOSS developer. Um, she said, on popular opinion, open source sometimes feels like being in an infinite hell. I developed an autoimmune disease due to extreme stress this year. My doctor was able to tell I left open source software by looking at my blood antibody panel. Um, this is concerning. Um, I think this is the side effect of the passion that we have. Uh, it's also a side effect of the fact that we are very unshielded from our community. Um, part of the, the, I feel like free and open source communities uh, they represent the best that the world has to offer. It's people contributing to passion projects because they love it, not for money, not for fame or glory. They're, they're here because they have passion for it and they truly want to give the world the best software available and they don't want to you know, have any sort of barriers to entry. So the barrier to using GNOME is low, the barrier to contributing to GNOME is low, and that's true for all open source projects, most open source projects. Um, but likewise, the barrier for hate is very low. We aren't a faceless organization, which means if somebody publishes a patch that is unfavorable, it is not, you know, Microsoft does something and then a PR team gets to, gets to get paid a lot of money to solve the problem. It's, you know, specifically one person gets singled out and it's their name that's front and center on all the news articles, and that is, uh, it's very visceral, um, it's very uh, scary, um, but I think it's also somewhat unavoidable. So like the currency of open source is your reputation. All of the patches, all of the code contributions, all of the things you've done represent you and your legacy in open source, um, whereas in proprietary software, something like, oh yeah, 15 years at senior developer at Amazon carries a lot of weight. Um, with open source, it's less, about, uh, it's less about what you are on paper and more so like show us the code, show us the contributions, show us the, the merit. Um, uh, Neil McGovern has told me that he, uh, he describes open source projects as duocracies, those that do uh, make it happen. Um, those that do get to make decisions. Fortunately, those that do also get to face the face the community. So, um, but it's not all bad. It's not all bad, and I think that actually things have been getting very, very good. Um, I think that because if we, if we just understand as a community that the community is very, very closely connected to each and every one of us, um, I think that if unmanaged, this can be very damaging, and it can be very disparaging, and it can cause people to leave open source software forever and never, ever, ever come back. Um, but I also think that if managed properly, it can be very beautiful, and it can be very powerful, and it can, it can be very um, liberating. So, what have I been doing? What have I been doing to try to foster this uh, sense of goodwill with our community, the sense of goodwill with each other uh, that I'm talking about? Um, so, trying to find the root and the truth in all of the sea of voices is a really, really, really hard task. It's a really hard task if you're paid to do it and you have a degree in psychology. Um, I don't have a degree in psychology, I have a degree in neuroscience, so I'm a little bit <laughs> tangential to the psychology. But um, I also have to do it in my volunteer time. Um, I, I can't spend 40, 50 hours a week searching through every post. So I have, to, I have to use the engagement team. I have to try to wean through with the tools that I have to try to find the nuggets of truth in the sea of voices. It's really hard, um, but I think in general, people out there, even when they're being the most vitriolic that they can be, I think the passion is still there, and I think that they still have value, and I think that they're still they shouldn't be ignored, and I think that they should be tried to lead be led to uh, another avenue of feedback, another avenue of response. So. Um, Number one thing that I've been doing is trying to turn our social media accounts into more of a wholesome, uh, friendly environment. Um, when unmanaged, the comment sections, as you all know, of news articles and blogs can turn into toxic cesspools. Um, when managed appropriately uh, and actively, they can be a really great place for communication. I feel like comment sections are kind of what you make of them. They, you get as much out of one of them as you put into it. Um, I'm not the only person in this room that manages our social media accounts. Shree also manages heavily the social media accounts. Um, 
But part of what I've been doing on our Twitter specifically and in our Reddit is trying to make it a lot more of a wholesome community. So that involves wholesome posts, trying to post about the good things that we're doing, goodwill between us and other communities, um, as well as in the comment sections, trying to address people's concerns. So instead of letting people's complaints go unanswered, I try to answer them in as much of a positive as I can and try to spin people's complaints into calls for action, invite them to take part instead of you know, turning around and complaining back to them or yelling back at them. Um, that's the number one thing that I've been doing. Other things that I've been doing is trying to humanize the project. So uh, these are some recent photos that I've been posting. Um, humanize the project. They forget that on the other side of the computer are people. They forget that we are human beings. Um, I think that a lot of times these uh, our open source communities lump us in the same bag as uh, paid software communities. They see us as the Microsofts, the Googles. They think that you know, at the end of the day, we're making loads of money and we go home to fancy mansions and we have like hammocks in our offices and stuff like that. Um, that's not the case. Uh, there's been some really funny uh, cartoon graphics showing like what you think open source software development looks like and what it actually is. And it's like, what you think it looks like is 10 people all standing around being like, oh, let's push the patch, let's have QA, blah, blah, blah. Where it's like, what actually is is just a guy saying like, oh yeah, it's two in the morning, I can get one more patch out. Um, I, want to, I, I want to humanize us as much as we can. I want people to know that human beings are on the other side. And if they disagree with the direction of Gnome Shell, they're not disagreeing with a nameless, faceless organization. They're disagreeing with people. And people can be persuaded, and people can be changed, and people can be reasoned with. So instead of turning your anger into screaming at the internet, you can turn your anger into valid, constructive feedback. I've always found that in my interactions with, with human beings, and you know, potentially animals and cats and dogs, um, people respond better, and people respond nicer when they recognize the human on the other side of the screen. So the anonymity, I think, breeds a lot of the uh, aggression. Another thing that I've been doing is trying to build up our relationship with our partners. So KDE and GNOME have basically been having like a love fest back and forth on Twitter for a while. I don't know who was over at KDE's social media accounts, but it's been getting a little weird. Um, <laughs> But things are good. Um, Ubuntu, uh, Canonical, and I have been tweeting back and forth. It's kind of fun to be like the voice of GNOME and like get to give thanks. Um, I want to do a better job of spreading around the uh, the love. Um, yeah, I've been informed that I have been a little fedora uh, light with my praise, so I should spread it a little better. Um, but that's one thing that I'm trying to do. Uh, a large part of our community, it turns out, want us to like battle each other to the death like gladiators. They want it to be like, they think it's KDE versus GNOME and like we need to like fight and there should only be one. Um, well, this isn't like the Highlander or whatever. <laughs> so we can survive together and I think we work better together. I, there is no world that I would want to live in where KDE is not strong and KDE is not successful. I think their success drives our success because we're all in this together. And things like the Linux Application Summit coming up that we're co-leading with KDE, I think, is a really positive and a really strong step in the direction of partnership. Um, and I think that conversations between all of our downstream partners, all the distributions, System76, Canonical, Fedora, um, I think all of these conversations, peers and lots of peers, <laughs> all these conversations, uh, the conversations that we're having are, are really strong. Everyone has their own interests, everyone has their own consumer base and customers and, and, and purpose, but we're not at odds with each other. I feel like in more often than not, we complement each other. So last but not least, uh, I've kind of been on a, a trend tweeting out the, uh, the last few days, uh, just trying to, to raise excitement, um, to get more people involved. Uh, I think our social media is best when it is fun and when it is active and when it is vibrant. Um, and this just builds on to the fact that I'm just trying to add faces, show that we're all friends. Um, we're not fighting elementary and GNOME don't hate each other. We're all in this together. So um, that has been my path so far. That has been my mission. Um, I've been doing it for approximately eight months now. I don't know if you've noticed the change on the social media accounts. Uh, I've also implemented a number of more technical side of things. I added a couple, I added some code of conducts for the way the Reddit, uh, the subreddit is maintained, which 
protects our users as much as it protects us. Um, I've added some auto moderation so that way a lot of the trolls, a lot of the people that don't actually want to contribute, they just want to disparage, um, they're just automatically somewhat kept afar. It's very reasonable. Um, things have been getting a lot better and I think that the subreddit is actually a pretty lively place for uh, discussion these days. Um, so I've been trying to implement the small changes like this and I have a number of other big changes that I'd like to see implemented over the next year. But here's my call for action. We need your help. Um, I can only do as much as I can do in the time between when I get off from work and go to sleep at night because I have a full-time job during the day. And getting your PhD is not like, it's not easy. It takes a lot of time. It's like 80 hours a week. So um, if you would like to be involved, if you'd like to help with my mission, help with my desire to foster goodwill and harmony and, uh, and favor with our community and let them know that their voices are heard, uh, the engagement team is looking for people. We're always looking for people, and we're all very nice. So um, if you'd like to be involved, I'd love to have a conversation with you. I'd love to get you involved. Um, other than that, with the last couple minutes that we have, I'd love to, if you guys have any ideas of what I've been doing good, please share. If I've been doing something bad, please keep that to yourself. <laughs> no, I kid. Uh, any, any ideas? Am I missing something? Um, is there another avenue for communication that I've been screwing up yet. Yeah. My question is uh, well, I'm to find yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> the feature is now. So um, you're asking for people to join the engagement team, which sounds good. What would that involve? Let's say that I wanted to join. Mm -hmm. um, how, how much time would I have to commit? What would I have to do? Any the engagement team can take up as much or as little time of your life as you would like it to take up. Um, it involves as little as just being available for community, just having a good conversation in our Telegram channels or our uh, Matrix channels. Just being available, just to share your opinion um, without actually having to execute any tasks yourself. All the way to being involved in organizing Guadec. Um, you can make of it as much as you like, or as little as you like. So the things the engagement team does, we uh, manage a lot of the events, we manage a lot of our websites, um, we manage uh, a lot of the uh, marketing and brand and materials, external facing materials. Um, so yeah, so we have found that there are, uh, there are things for people of all walks of life to do. People that don't code have a thing to do. People that do code have lots and lots of things to do. We need lots of coders and designers. So if you're any of those, uh, yeah. Website. Website. One of the big things is we have plans to try to revamp the GNOME core website and a lot of documentation websites and a lot of the development resources. Um, that's an ongoing task that we have all of the best intentions for but are just lacking manpower to actually execute. So. So I'll add uh, one thing. Um, in order to grow our developer community, we actually have to grow the other teams because um, a lot of those is what allows us to attract more developers, right? So if, if you're not out there creating a great experience, better documentation, better all those other stuff, uh, then it's harder for us to attract because the – where is, things are going now is there's an explosion of open source, right? So now we're in competition with all these corporate type pro projects, and so in order to attract them, we we have to we have to actually up our game and, and be able to uh, talk uh, show that we're a, a community to be part of. That first Twitter that was mine, but <laughs> but but that thing was actually spread quite wide. And share it quite wide. So, I mean, it, people and people are attracted to the notion that this is a community that you can stay for twenty plus years, and and st still be happy to be in it. You know, that's that's a pretty strong statement. All right. So, uh, unfortunately, we're out of time. Um, so, you have a few minutes to run to switch rooms if you're interested in the other talk, or just stay put. And in a couple of minutes, we can get started with our next uh, our next speaker. Thank you all very much.